High Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans takes us back 400 years for his story of The Prisoner. Fog's so thick we can't see the bow, Captain. It should clear when we round Ushant. Well, perhaps before. There's a fair breeze coming up from the west. You can tell the boy to stop ringing the bell, Mr. Hughes. There'll be few ships to warn in these waters this time of the year. Aye. Regan! You can stand down! Oh, we're coming out of the fog bank now, Mr. Hughes. Tell the bosun to... What's the matter, Captain? Take a look, man. Ahead and on both sides of us. Hide ahead, starboard and starboard. How many can you count? Look out! Too many to count, sir. Galleys, every one of them. Spaniards, I'll be bound. Yes, Mister Mate, you'll be bound. It's the Spanish Armada we've heard rumors of, and we've sailed right into the middle. All men to stations. Run out the guns! Come on, all, all men, the men to stations. Men. Die goeie ouda van Springbok Radio is terug. Twintig onverkrijgbare liekies nou op een CD. Met al jou ginstelinge, Virginia Lee, Cora Marie, Anton Goosen, Sonja Herold, Cupido en vele meer. Herleef Springbok Radio, Afrikaanse treffers. The following classic Springbok Radio commercial comes to you with the courtesy of the Springbok Radio Preservation Society of South Africa. Someday you own it. Someday you own it. Sooner or later you own generals. Someday you own it. Someday you own it. Someday you'll own General Tires. They're closing in on all sides, Captain. I've got eyes, Mr. Hughes. They're impatient to take us, I see. Aye, if only we had the speed and wind to turn about and give warning. See the soldiers on the decks, packed like West Indies slavers. I'd say they're bound for Plymouth to bottle our fleet in the Sound. Aye, there's going to be a great battle soon. Meanwhile, we must look to our own. Aye, their shot's going too high. That's a thought, Mr. Hughes. They're tall galleys, built for the Mediterranean. Our ships are low in the water. The closer they come, the safer we are. If they come right alongside, they'll be putting broadsides into each other with us sitting pretty in the middle. Until those Dago soldiers come pouring on board. They're within our range, sir. Hi. Well, we'll show them what few teeth we have. Go down and send them a broadside. Aye, aye. Fifteen hundred and eighty-eight. One hundred thirty Spanish galleys with their rows of sweating oarsmen were bearing down on the English coast. Every one of the twenty-seven thousand souls on board those ships thought their fleet was invincible, like a leather jackboot poised to stamp out the life from an ant. When the small English merchantmen suddenly appeared in the midst of the fleet, the ensuing action was a foretaste of the future. The lumbering galleys suffered from the Englishman's broadsides, and three were badly damaged before the merchantman was overwhelmed and sunk by sheer weight of numbers. Captain Rupert Haynes was the only man to be spared. He was taken on board the front-line galleon, the Santa Berta, 
commanded by Don Hidalgo de Veres. To his surprise, no attempt was made to curtail his liberty on board. Indeed, he was treated as an honored guest by the commander and his officers. Uh, may I present her my daughter, Carlita? Honored to meet you, Miss Carlita. Tell me, Don Hidalgo, is it customary for you to bring your families to war? <laughs> war? There will be no war to speak of, Capitan Haynes. A combined onslaught from our armada and the Duke of Parma's army across the channel will finish England in a matter of days. You will have some wine here, Capitan. It is the finest sheriff. Uh, thank you, yes. It was a fine engagement, sir. Your men fought well. We expected you to strike your colors before our soldiers boarded you. Well, it is a pity indeed I didn't have nine more ships like the Elsie. We'd have turned you back to Cadiz. Oh, I do not think so, Capitan Haynes. You wait till Lord Howard brings his fleet out to meet you. Small ships, lightly armed, no match for our galleons. Uh, that we shall see. Your galleons are too big, too high, difficult to maneuver. Our ships can move in under your guns and pound you with broadside cannon. Our power relies in grappling and boring. Aye, but first you've got to catch your victim. <laughs> And that will be the hardest part. <laughs> ah, we can argue all day, but only a battle will prove us right. Carlita has been taught your language by her governess, an Irish woman we rescued from the moors some years ago. Her name is Mary O'Shanagan. Uh, tell El Capitan about her. I am sure he will be interested. Kindly excuse me. It is time for a meeting with my officers. Mary was a passenger on a ship bound for Venice. It was captured by the Moors and she was made a slave. My father rescued her when he attacked Theota and put her into our service. She taught you well, Miss Carlita. Mary also taught my father English. Are you not afraid going into a certain sea battle like this? I feel it's no place for a lady. You heard what my father said. It will be nothing. Your father is desperately wrong. The English ships will sail into the armada like a swarm of bees and create havoc. It will not be so. My father says he has orders not to engage the English in a sea battle. We shall sail past and ignore your small sailing ships. Not engage us in battle? Then of what use is this gigantic armada of ships? To protect and cover the advance of the Duke of Parma's army when it crosses the channel. He has 90,000 men awaiting our arrival. Ah, so that's the plan. In the close confines of the channel, your ships will be helpless. Ours will stand like a line of castles from Dunkirk to Dover. Would you like some more wine, Captain Haynes? Mm, aye, thank you. Just think, Captain Haynes. Uh, you will have a magnificent view of the invasion of your country from our deck. Mm, it's a good plan, I'll readily admit. But I have a feeling there's a flaw somewhere, and I can't quite put a finger on it. Three days later, the coast of southern England could be seen on the flames of many signal beacons relayed the news of the Armada's coming. Off Plymouth, a small fleet of English ships came out of the harbor to give battle. The Spanish ships formed a tight defensive position and continued on their way. The long-range cannon duel caused little damage to either side. Again, off Portland, the English ships challenged the Armada and were ignored. Then, a third time it happened, as the Spaniards passed the Isle of Wight with the same result. With impotent anger, Rupert Haynes watched the running cannon duel from the high stern castle of the Santa Berta. The English captains haven't realized yet how vulnerable the galleons are. Oh, just for the chance to tell them. They can see our power and keep their distance. Your armada cannot remain in tight formation like this forever. If a storm brews and disperses the galleons, it will be picked off one by one. Meanwhile, well, have you ever seen sheepdogs herding sheep? Your armada is the sheep. A fine, imaginative parallel, Captain. But one prompted only by wishful thinking. Dogs yapping about the uncles of fully armored knights would be a better description. Here is my father. 
He will tell you how the English ships are useless against us. <laughs> Quarreling again. <laughs> you must be very discomforted to see your ships swapping off the westward, Captain Hale. They have had their fill of our long-range cannon. I feel that your confidence is misplaced. <laughs> your people have left it too late. See, we have changed course to take us from the coast. In two days, we shall be at Calais and join to the Duke of Parma's boat. Don Hidalgo was right. A massive fleet of galleons and galleys safely dropped anchor in the shelter of Calais Harbor. The English had remained content to shadow these flotilla of floating fortresses. As far as Rupert Haynes was concerned, all was lost. He was unable to see the English fleet standing off in mid-channel, a fleet that grew greater by the hour. Lord Howard now knew the weaknesses of his enemy and the erratic temperament of the Spaniard. He remembered how, the year before, Drake had sailed fire ships into Cardiff Harbor and burned the Spanish fleet. The tightly packed Spaniards now at anchor were an ideal target for such a tactic. I've been watching you for a long time, staring out to sea. Does it make you sad to see your countrymen so close and yet so far away? Enough to tempt me to break my bond to your father and try to escape. Oh, see, I know how you must feel. It is a great pity we are not allies instead of enemies. We are separated by religion and the greed for rich colonies, Miss Carlita. The latter can be resolved by discussion, but the first only by war. Look. Look over there, where the nearest English ships are standing off. One of them is moving towards us. Perhaps an emissary. No, be damned. You see the smoke? It's a fire ship. Look, there's another. The wind's blowing them right into your fleet. following classic Springbok Radio commercial comes to you with the courtesy of the Springbok Radio Preservation Society of South Africa. Mmm, -hmm. there's a lot of goodness and quality in Blossom. Always make sure you have enough in the house. Taste the margarine that starts with B with vegetable oil so pure with vitamin and more. It's Blossom, the word for goodness and quality. Some things in life are obvious and easy. If you have a business providing a good service or selling a product, you need to let people know. But how do you do that? Easy. Just tell them here on springbokradio.com. Internet radio is about talking to people in their own homes. Your message becomes part of the sound they've chosen to listen to. To find out more about advertising on springbokradio.com, contact Dave Dupria on Johannesburg 011-678-5176 or for outside South Africa, 27116785176 or email dave at springbokradio.com. Spaniards also remembered the destruction of their fleet by Drake's fireships. They panicked when they saw the six flaming hulks bearing down on them. Anchors were raised and canvas unfurled. With agonizing slowness, the Spanish galleons cleared the anchorage and stood out to sea, falling neatly into the English trap. The fast-moving ships sailed into the disarrayed Spanish fleet and closely engaged them with devastating broadsides. The English fired from close range with their light shot and spread pandemonium among the enemy. The Spaniards found their own guns were too highly placed to cause damage to the English vessels. The magnificent galleons wallowed helplessly. The soldiers crowding their decks were useless since no English ship came close enough to be grappled for boarding. Fire spread and 
magazines exploded. The battle raged into mid-channel. Relief for the Spaniards only came when the English began to run short of ammunition. Santa Berta had been lucky. With slight damage to her rigging and bullocks, Don Hidalgo had steered north. After a running engagement with a small Dutch privateer, Santa Berta was left alone. Like the rest of his men, Don Hidalgo was in a fit of black despair and bewilderment. Oh, it was a trap. The English knew of our fear of their fire ships. Oh, so many of our good ships destroyed. He who commands the channel commands England. You've lost, Don Hidalgo. Uh, no, no, not yet. The Duke of Parma's army is unscathed. Not even a million men could invade England without ships to carry them. Where is your mustering point, Don Hidalgo? The mustering point? I do not understand. Where has your admiral arranged for your ships to gather after the battle? No such arrangements have been made. It was not conceived that we could lose. So, it's every man for himself. Well, you can't go into any of the French ports. By now, they will be heavily blockaded. Nor can you pass south through the channel for the same reason. I fear Captain Haynes is right, Father. Ah, see, see. I have already considered this. I think every Spanish commander will take the only alternative left. To sail north about across the top of Scotland and down the Atlantic coast of Ireland. That route will help us avoid meeting up with the English. A fearsome journey in a ship such as this, built for the Mediterranean, not the Atlantic. For several days, the Santa Berta sailed north, helped by a southerly breeze. A gale ravaged the galleon shortly after turning west, but it quickly abated. The course was changed to southwest, and the following day to south. The hills of western Ireland could be seen, topping the distant horizon. During this voyage, Carlita had mellowed towards Rupert Haynes. Gone was her arrogance and stiff formality. She was rapidly falling in love with the tall Englishman. This was observed by her father, much to his consternation. Early one morning, he called Rupert into his cabin. Sit down, Captain Haynes. I am most concerned about Kalita. She talks only of you, and that is not good. I am sure you can understand why. Well, we have spent a lot of time together, Don Hidalgo. She loves me, and I know that to be true. Although the words have never been spoken. It cannot be. She is a Catholic and you are Protestant, a heretic. You are natural enemies. We are also an aristocratic family. And you, governor, it is unthinkable for you to love each other. I disagree. Perhaps. I am told the common Englishman suffers from too much tolerance. Capitan Haynes, I am freeing you from your bond of honor. You are no longer a prisoner, and you will not return with us to Spain. This afternoon I will stand close off the coast and sit you down in a boat. Well, that is very kind of you, Don Hidalgo. Also, a most effective way of separating me from Carlita. I uh, see, that is so. But you do realize what will befall you if I carry you on to Spain. You will be handed over to the Inquisition as a heretic. You will be put to the question and suffer the torment of fire, rope, and water. Either way, you will not have my daughter. I have no wish to test the mercy of your inquisition. Thank you for the offer of a boat. I accept. My bien. You will go to your cabin, and you will be called when all is ready for your departure. Uh, I have one request, Don Hidalgo. Uh, See. Si. May I talk with Carita before I leave? Only in my presence. No, alone. A few minutes only to say farewell. It is not easy for lovers to part in the presence of another. Uh, it is against my better judgment, but... Uh, yes, a few minutes only. Now? Just before you leave. No, oh, it is better I see her now. It might make our parting a little easier. Oh, very well. I will take you to work. That is what I feared most, Rupert. Yet you going to Spain would be worst. I don't know what to say. Heart is it's almost bursting. I want you safe and alive. But I also need your love. 
I will die when you're gone. All is not lost. Not if you are ready to defy your father. Defy him? How? Now listen. I have little time to explain. So listen carefully. As I passed along the deck, I saw the boat being prepared. I, I can see in your expression you know what's in my mind. When those fire ships descended on us in Calais, of all the people I saw, you were the calmest. Now you need the same courage, the same composure. You're betrothed to Don Miguel de Pastoro. The choice is between him and me. Luxury or hardship. You, querido. You and hardship. There is no question. No doubt in my mind. At three that afternoon, a boat was lowered from the galleon's main deck, and Rupert took his leave from Don Hidalgo de Veres. The tall ship rolled heavily, caught the strengthening breeze in her canvas, and slipped away from the nearby rocky shore. Rupert pulled on his oars for a narrow cove. Don Hidalgo breathed a sigh of relief. His ship was relatively safe from attack by the English, his daughter safe from the attentions of an enemy commoner, and his course was set fair for home. He pleasurably sipped a glass of wine, gave instructions to his officers, then went down below to comfort Carlita. Carlita? Are you there? Carlita! She must have defied my instructions and gone on deck. But Carlita was nowhere on board. At that moment, she was sitting in the stern of Rupert's boat as it crunched on the sandy beach. An hour before his departure, she had crept out onto the galleon's deck and hidden under the furled sail in the bottom of the small boat. The Santa Berta was already well over the horizon. On the narrow strip of beach, they embraced it was easier than I dared hope for. We're not safe yet. The Irish in these parts are very warlike and distrustful of strangers. We must avoid the villages and make for a town and beg sanctuary. Look over there, Rupert. A man. He has seen us. He, he, he's a fisherman. Hello! He's coming towards us. He seems afraid. He must have seen the Santa Berta and perhaps thinks we're spies. Hello there! Can you speak English? Oh, he says I can. Who are you? I'm Rupert Haynes. You're English, are you? What of the woman here? Uh, Senorita Carlita de Paris. Uh, an Englishman and a Spaniard. It's a fine mixture, that is. And you're both in dire danger in these parts. You, they'll ransom, and the Spanish woman, they'll hang since she's worth no money. And you? I don't care. All's my friends till it becomes troublesome. The villagers will have seen the Spanish ship and be coming soon to look on the beach. There's much talk of Spanish treasure and loot. Now come with me to my cave. You might be safe there for a while. Oh, this is a Catholic country. Is there no abbey where we might claim sanctuary? Aye, about five leagues distant. But you'll not escape the eyes of the village people until it's dark. Now come while you're still time. The wizened old Irish fisherman took them to a cave halfway up the cliff face, which was the place where he lived. It was sparsely furnished with chairs and a table hammered together from odd pieces of driftwood. Soon they heard the babble of voices below. They know that somebody's landed. They've seen the boats in your footprints. Hi, look at them, look at them. They're looking up here now. We've been in trouble before for hiding fugitives. Three English sailors it were last winter. I, I, I'll be beaten again, I expect. What can we do, Rupert? We have no weapons to defend ourselves. I'll smash up this table. We can use the legs as clothes. No, wait, wait. What is it? They've got other things on their minds. The Spanish ship is coming back. Look, you can see them. They're dancing with excitement. They think it's coming for them full of treasure. You're right. They've forgotten all about us. Can we get to the top of the cliff from here? No, you're along this ledge. Good. Let's go now while there's a chance. My father must have guessed the truth and has come back to look for me. He's probably saved our lives in doing so. Follow me. I might be lucky and escape another beating. Unseen by the people below, they moved cautiously along the ledge and reached the top of the cliff. Before them rolled a hilly, sparsely wooded countryside. Sean led the way, muttering prayers over every yard that they would not be spotted. 
Don Hidalgo sent ashore a longboat filled with soldiers. This resulted in a fierce clash on the beach and a hurried retreat by the Spaniards. The following classic Springbok radio commercial comes to you with the courtesy of the Springbok Radio Preservation Society of South Africa. Today, change to the confidence oils from Mobil. Mobil motor oils exceed the warranty requirements of every leading car manufacturer in the world. That's confidence. And they carry the SABS mark of approval. That's confidence. Mobil motor oils are right for your car. Change to them today with confidence. Motor with Mobil and smile, smile. Motor with Mobil and smile. When it's gone, if you want to help, then this is what to do. Make sure the water hog is never, never you. Just make sure the water hog is never, never you. There it is. It's down in the dell, you see. A monastery. Father Bartholomew will give you sanctuary. Even a Protestant? Aye, aye, even a Protestant. He's a true man of God, is Father Bartholomew. You, you just don't tell him that you and this Spanish woman are lovers, that's all. He wouldn't like that. I'll be off with you now, and may God's blessings go along with you, sir. Thank you, old man. If I can ever do anything for you... Only one thing, my lad. Just say a prayer as I don't get my... Rupert and Carlita reached the monastery safely and were welcomed by the elderly abbot. They were duly given sanctuary and ten days later traveled under the protection of the church in a donkey cart across Ireland to the seaport of Cork on the east coast. From there, they took a ship to Bristol. The lovers were married some months later, shortly after receiving news of the fate of the Santa Berta. The galleon foundered in a storm in the Bay of Biscay, and was lost with all hands. Don Hidalgo never knew he had saved his daughter's life. High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Duffenthal. 